So topic three point or 5.3 to 5.4 um, is over increasing and decreasing functions and the first derivative test. So I have this random graph that I, I got from the calculator um, and then pasted it in here. So the beginning of the, from, uh, if you're reading from left to right, the far left of this graph, I think we all could agree this section of the graph is decreasing. And that's something that you talked about in Algebra 2 um, and pre-calculus. And then we also talked about like the slopes are all negative on a decreasing section. Um, we can also say that the derivatives are all negative on a decreasing section. So all that f prime of x is less than zero. All right here, this middle section, we all could agree is that's where the, the function is constant. And that, that, that section right there has a slope of zero or a first derivative that's equal to zero. All right, and then this right section um, is where the graph is increasing, where the slopes are all positive, or where the first derivative is positive. Now we have to be careful on our wording. Um, we can't say the first derivative is increasing because that means something else. We would say the first derivative is positive. The function f of x is increasing. Okay, so we have to be super careful about how we say things um, with this uh, first derivative test and then later in the second derivative test. All right, so um, we're going to say f of x is a function is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. If the first derivative is positive, then the function is increasing on that interval. All right, if the first derivative is negative, f prime of x is negative, the function is decreasing. And then when f prime of x is zero, the function is constant. Okay, and then I just kind of reworded that. This is kind of repetitive um, because I, I kind of said it like I would I read it like I would say it, which is what I put there below. When the first derivative of the function is positive, f is increasing. And when the first derivative of a function is negative, f is decreasing. Okay. And then um, if the function changes from decreasing to increasing, we end up with a relative minimum. Where sometimes that's called a local minimum. Right? And then just the opposite, if a function is decreasing and then all of a sudden changes to increasing, that's when you end up with a relative maximum. Right. And then the critical number. So we talked about this a little um, while ago, but a critical number is a value of x that makes f prime of x zero, so the first derivative zero, or f prime of x undefined. All right, and then that leads us to the first derivative test. All right, so we're gonna kind of say the same thing we just said right here, except we're gonna be talking, instead of increasing or decreasing, we're gonna be talking about the first derivative being positive or negative. So if C is a critical number of a function, so when the first derivative is zero, we're undefined, um, and f is continuous um, on that interval and differentiable also that um, then if f 
prime of C changes from negative to positive. So we have negative derivative, negative slope to positive slope. That's where we end up with a relative minimum. Okay, and then also if we have um, a positive derivative, so a positive slope, and then changes to a negative slope, that's where we have a relative maximum. Right. And then, um, and these are happening at C. Right. And then sometimes C is a critical number, um, but the first derivative is positive, and then it becomes zero, and then it's positive again. Um, that doesn't create a maximum or a minimum. And then same thing here. C is a critical number, but um, the first derivative is negative, and then zero, and then negative again. So that um, doesn't create a relative it's neither a relative maximum nor a relative minimum. And we've all seen that happen in graphs. It happens. Okay, so on our um, examples here, we're going to do three things. Find critical numbers. Find the open intervals on which a function is increasing or decreasing and then apply the first derivative test to identify any relative extrema. All right, so to find the critical numbers, that's where we're going to find f prime of x and set equal to zero or find where It's undefined. All right, so let's start with that on example one. Okay, those are derivatives, so we'll, um, a polynomial function is never undefined. So we'll just find where this function is equal to zero. So we have two critical numbers, zero and two. All right, and then for B, for B, we're gonna find the open intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. So what we'll do is label a number line with the critical numbers. And then test each region using the first derivative. All right, so here's my number line. My critical numbers are zero and two. All right, so those divide my number line into three regions. So I'm going to test um, each region so I'll start with the left of zero, and it's the first derivative test, so we're testing these values in the first derivative in between. Sorry, that, that first one should be a negative one, sorry. So I will plug them into the first derivative. 
Now this one, the numbers are pretty small, so it's kind of easy just to plug it into the, um, this version of the derivative. Um, if it had been kind of complicated, it, sometimes it's easier to plug into the factored version because all we really need to know is, is this positive or negative. So when I put in negative 1, I would square it, multiply it by 3, multiply it by negative uh, 6. So I know that negative 1 squared is 1, and then 1 times 3 is 3, and then that's going to be plus 6. So this is definitely going to be positive right there. Okay, and then same thing, we would put in 1. Now when you put in 1, all you really have to do is add the coefficients. All right, so that's definitely going to be negative. And then we'll put in 3. All right, so this is going to be 27 minus 18, which is going to be positive. All right. Now this function is a um, polynomial function, so that means it is continuous everywhere. So we can apply the first derivative test, continuous and differentiable everywhere. All right, so in this region to the left of zero, we have a positive first derivative, so the graph is increasing. Um, then in between, we have a negative derivative, so the graph is decreasing. And then at the very end, we have a positive, so increasing. So for first derivative test, we can draw little arrows if you wanted to, to show the direction of the graph. So we can say f of x is increasing. from negative infinity to zero, and then from two to infinity. And f of x is decreasing from zero to two. So I could have done that without the function um, being continuous everywhere, as long as it's continuous in between those intervals. All right, and then for C. C asks us to apply the first derivative test to identify all the relative extrema. So at zero, it's a critical number. The function changes from um, increasing to decreasing, or you could say the derivative changes from positive to negative. So there is going to be a relative maximum when x is 0. Now we want to find the y. So to find the y, we are going to need to plug 0 into the original function. And when you do, you get a relative maximum at the point 0, 4. OK. And then our relative minimum occurs at your critical number um, 2. And then to find the entire point, we would plug 2 into the original function. And it looks like we're going to get 0. OK, so that's how you do all the things. These are time consuming, but y'all can do it. In fact, we're going to do a couple more. So let's start with number um, example two. We're going to start with finding the critical numbers. All right, so we will need to find the derivative. So I multiplied by that one at the end because I did the chain rule. 
So this derivative is really 2 over 3 times the cube root of x plus 2. Now this function will never be 0. So for a function that has a fraction like this to be 0, the numerator would need to be 0. The numerator can never be 0. Nathan, please report to the main office. Alright, sorry about that. And then for the for the function to be undefined is where the denominator is equal to zero. So this derivative derivative is undefined at x equals negative two. So that makes x equals negative two a critical number. Now if you guys hope you're remembering what this graph looks like. So this is going to be like the bird graph I talk about all the time. It's going to look like that. So we're, um, I kind of already know what it is, but we can show it throughout uh, the problem because uh, sometimes you don't have all the information. You don't already know what the graph looks like when you're determining these things. So for B, we're asked to find where the function is increasing and decreasing. So we'll do our number line. And go ahead and put our critical number in the middle. All right, and we are going to test a value in each region. And we're testing it with the first derivative. This is the first derivative test. Okay, so f prime of negative 3 is going to be 2 over 3 times the cube root of negative 1. Because it's negative 3 plus 2. And so that's going to be 2 divided by negative 3 or a negative. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with zero. So we do zero plus two is two, which is gonna be a positive divided by a positive, which is a positive. All right, so on the left side of our critical number, the first derivative is negative, so the function is decreasing. And then on the right side of two, the first derivative is positive, so the function is increasing. So f of x is increasing from negative 2 to infinity. And f of x is decreasing from negative, from negative infinity to negative 2. And we kind of already knew that because we knew that this was one of those bird graphs and we had a um, horizontal shift. All right. And this function is continuous everywhere. So now I'm going to determine where I have any relative extrema. So because the first derivative changes from negative to positive when x is negative 2, that creates a relative minimum when x is negative 2. And then I would need to plug that negative 2 into f to get the y part which is zero. Now I know in all of these relative minimum and maximum we found that we have had zeros but that doesn't always happen. It's okay to have a, a random point that's not on the x or y axis to be your relative extrema so don't worry about that. Okay so now let's look at a. For a we're going to start off and find our critical numbers by finding the derivative of f. Before I do that, I'm going to rewrite it real quick. I'm going to rewrite it as 4x plus x to the negative 1. Okay, 
So I would, because I have to use this later, I would want to write this as 4 minus 1 over x squared. That is my derivative, my first derivative. And I want to know when that is equal to 0. And I need to know when that is undefined. So let's start with it equal to 0. And I would just bump over that 1 over x squared and make it positive and then multiply by x squared and solve it for x. All right, so I'm going to get two values of x that make the first derivative equal to 0. Do I have any values of x that make the first derivative undefined? I do. When x is 0, that first derivative is undefined. So this function has three critical numbers. So let's draw our number line. All right, now let's talk about where this function, the original function, f of x, is, is it continuous everywhere? And it's not. Um, this function is not continuous at x equals 0. So that means 0 cannot be a maximum or minimum. So I'm going to make a note. That cannot be a max or min because the function is undefined there. So it's um, probably going to be a vertical asymptote. It could possibly be a hole in the graph, but most likely vertical asymptote. So even if the first derivative changes from positive to negative there, it's not going to be a maximum or a minimum. We'll still figure out what's going on with it, though. Okay, so let's test a point in each region. So left of negative 1 half, I'm going to test negative 1. In between negative 1 half and 0, let's go ahead and test negative 1 fourth. All right, and then we'll test positive 1 fourth. And we'll test 1. Okay, and just keep in mind, we only care if we get a positive or negative here. Here, we don't really care what the value is. So 4 over 1, so 4 minus 1 over negative 1 squared is going to be 4 minus 1, which is going to be a positive. So we might need to do a little more work with this one. So negative 1 4 squared is 1 16. And then 1 over 1 16 is the same thing as 16. So this is going to be a negative. Right, and then basically um, the same thing happens again in this region because when I square the negative, one-fourth, I get positive one-sixteenth again, so that's going to be a negative. And then this one works out just like one worked out. Because when I square one, I get one, so this is going to be a positive. Okay, so we are, are we're increasing, we're decreasing, and then we have probably a vertical asymptote, and then we're decreasing again, and then we're increasing. Okay, so we would say f of x is increasing from negative infinity to negative one half and from one half to infinity. All right, and then we would say f of x is decreasing 
from negative one half to zero, and then from zero to one half. Now I have seen answers that are correct that say decreasing from negative one half to one half. I don't like that. that to me, that's not the best answer because at zero, it's not doing anything because the function doesn't even exist there. Um, so I prefer it this way. It's possible. You might see um, a multiple choice question where that is the best answer that's offered. But I don't think it's actually the best answer, but that's my opinion. All right. And then for C, um, we are going to have a relative maximum at the critical number, negative one half, because the first derivative changes from positive to negative. All right. And then I'm just to save on time, when you plug in negative one half into f, you get um, negative four. So that is your relative max. And then we have a relative min at the critical number positive one half. And we would put that in to our function and we get positive four. And that always messes people up that the the minimum is actually higher than the maximum, but what uh, what's happening on this graph is you um, have some asymptotes, and so on the left side, this is a max, so something um, is happening like, uh, like this, and then down here it's happening like this. I think, yeah, something like that. Oh, wait, 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 Yeah, so that's a relative min, and that's a relative max. And that's fine. That one's higher than the other. Don't worry. Okay, so let me, your assignment is out of the book today. <laughs> there is a hole. I'm going to have to figure out, we have one more 20-something. And then 30 and 34. Hold on just a second. It's 28. <laughs> 